Hello, good people of geometry. This is Mr. Heron, and welcome to the, the last section of, of Unit 4. Um, we, we've kind of talked a whole bunch about a bunch of different four-sided figures, and, and trapezoids and, and kites um, are, are kind of the last four-sided figures we talk about. And, and one of the biggest ideas, and one of the biggest things I want you to know when you, when you go after this is that these... These are not parallelograms, okay? So they don't follow, they don't fall under that category of parallelograms, okay? So, so the five things that are true of a parallelogram um, are not necessarily true in, in trapezoids and kites, okay? So these, can, they're still four-decided figures, okay? They're still, they're still quadrilaterals, okay? So we, so we need to understand that, that these are still four-sided figures, but they're not parallelograms. Okay, so let's, let's talk about these. So a trapezoid is, is a, there's a good visual of it over here. Trapezoid has only got one pair of parallel sides, just one. Okay, these, these are often called the bases. Okay, those are your parallel sides. And then your, your non-parallel sides, these two things are called legs. So... These two are bases, these two are legs, and then an isosceles trapezoid. Um, for those of you that don't recall, isosceles just means I have a, an isosceles triangle. It's a triangle with two sides equal, and then you might remember that the base angles are equal. Well, it's a similar idea for, for an um, isosceles trapezoid. I have these two, my two legs are congruent. That means that my opposite angles are congruent. Okay, so that is um, kind of the way that goes for an isosceles trapezoid. So it's kind of just like your base angles in an isosceles triangle were congruent. Now you're saying, hey, both of these base angles are congruent. And, and once again, just this is a small minor detail. In an isosceles trapezoid, only in an isosceles trapezoid, um, the diagonals are congruent. Okay, so a trapezoid has one parallel lines. If, if we jump to isosceles trapezoid, um, two bases, two legs. Um, so we have two parallel bases and two congruent legs. Okay, much, much like you would in, in an isosceles triangle, you have two congruent sides. Now you have two congruent legs. And, and once again, the diagonals end up being congruent as, as a result of this and this. So, uh, we, we, one of the things we talk about with the trapezoid is something called the mid-segment. And, and mid-segment connects the legs of the trapezoid, and it's parallel to the bases, and it's one-half the sum of the lengths of the bases. <laughs> okay, so, so what this says is that Vs, okay, that segment Vs is going to be equal to my two bases divided by two. Okay, so you're basically averaging them. Okay, so you're averaging them. So QR is base, the top base, UT is, is the bottom base, and VS is a mid-segment. Okay, so that's going to be exactly halfway in between. So the length is going to be just the average of those two. Okay, so now let's, let's explore some of these ideas. Okay, so let, let's see what we have. So we, we have that these two are parallel. Okay, one pair of parallel sides means that it is a trapezoid. Okay, then, then we have that they tell us these two are congruent. Okay, these two are congruent. So that means this is an isosceles trapezoid. Okay, so that, that tells me that this is an isosceles trapezoid. Now, um, so now... Let's, let's change gears here a little bit. So if it's an isosceles trapezoid, that tells us a lot of things. So that tells us, one, this is also 101. Okay, so, so that's a 101 degrees. And then here's, here's something else you need to remember. Um, 101 and, and this angle right here, they're going to be supplementary. So I need to take 180 
minus that. So that's going to be 79 degrees. Okay, that's going to be 79 degrees. These two are going to be supplementary. These two are also going to be supplementary. Okay, so, so that's why it, it sometimes has some things in common with, with a parallelogram, but it's not a full parallelogram. But remember, this, this, is a, this is a concept that is we talked about all the way back in Unit 2. Um, if I've got parallel lines and, and I draw a transversal, which is kind of similar to here, remember, these two angles are going to be supplementary. Those are called consecutive interior. Okay? So now, let's, let's look again. So they tell you it's an isosceles trapezoid. It's very nice. It tells us a lot of things. JML, so this whole thing is 130. KN is 6.7. MN is 3.6. Okay, so this whole thing together, 6.7 plus 3.6. So that whole diagonal is going to be 10.3. Okay, so now let's, let's see what kind of questions they're asking. What is MJK? Okay, MJK is this angle right here. Okay, well, if this one's 130, this has got to be supplementary to that. Okay, that's supplementary. So I want to take 180 minus 130, and I get 50. So that's just going to be 50 degrees. So then JL, JL is this diagonal right here. Okay, so that's that diagonal. So remember, in an isosceles trapezoid, okay, diagonals are congruent. Okay, diagonals are congruent. So, so if MK, which we figured out down here was 10.3, JL is also going to be 10.3. Okay, we've answered those questions. Okay, so do we have a trapezoid? DFGH. So let's 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 sketch this out here a little bit. So so we have DF. And down here we have GH. So DF is going to be 5, GH is going to be 17. They want to know what the mid-segment is. They want, they want to know what the mid-segment is. So remember, the mid-segment is, is exactly halfway in between. Okay, so there's my mid-segment, M. So remember, M is going to be equal to the two bases divided by 2. So that means 22 divided by 2. So that means this is just going to be 11. And that's all I'm doing. That's all I'm doing. All I've got to realize is that it's base plus base divided by 2. That's it. Okay, so now let's... now. Okay, now we have, we have a mid-segment. Okay, we, we have a mid-segment. MN is the mid-segment of, of FGJK. So f figure out X. Well, X is this bottom base. X is this bottom base. So... so Remember, okay, so it's going to be base plus base divided by 2 is going to equal my mid-segment. So 20 plus x divided by 2 is going to be 30. So, so now it's an, an algebra problem. Okay, so multiply both sides by 2. That gives me 20 plus x equals 60. So x equals 40. There's my answer. There's my answer. There's my length. Boom, right there. Okay? Okay. So this one, a little trickier. So now, length of one base of a trapezoid to 44. The mid-segment is 30. The other base is 2x plus 12. Find the value of x. So let's, let's sketch this here. Okay, so we have a trapezoid. Okay, so let's see, mid-segment, 30, 
one base is 44, the other one 2x plus 12. Okay, so th this is my setup. This is my setup. And I, and I know that 44 is on the bottom because my mid-segment is smaller than 44. All right, so, so this, this top base should be smaller than 44. Okay, so let's look. So we have 2x plus 12 plus 44. All that divided by 2 equals 30. So 2x plus 56. So then I, I, can, I can divide everything by 2. Okay, so I, I can do like, oops, I want this one. So I want 2x over 2 plus 56 over 2 equals 30. So then I'll move up here. So it'll give me x plus 28 equals 30. So x equals 2. x equals 2. Okay, so this, this is a good, um, ignore this. This is a good kind of reminder of, of how algebra works. And, and kind of working within a, a geometric idea. Okay. So kite, a little bit different. Okay, kite, a little bit different. You have two consecutive congruent sides. So, so please take a look at this. Consecutive. So that means these two are equal. These two lengths are equal. These two lengths are equal. Okay. So in a kite, okay, only one pair of opposite angles are, are congruent. And please look, please look which one it is, okay? It's, it's these two, okay? So you have these two sides congruent. You have these two sides congruent. And the angle in between there are the ones that are congruent, okay? So you have the sides congruent, and you have a very specific angle on which, which is congruent. Um, and one of the kind of um, results of this is that the diagonals are perpendicular, Okay, the diagonal between the non-congruent angles bisects the pair of angles. So, what does that mean? That means that, okay, these two angles are e congruent, but these two angles get bisected. That's what that means. Okay, that's what that means. Okay, so now let's explore some of those ideas. Okay, so let's look. So this is a kite. Okay, they want X, Y, Z, so they want this angle right here. Uh, well, well, I know, okay, if these two angles are, if these two sides are congruent, these two sides are congruent. Um, these two angles are congruent, so that makes that 121. That makes that 121. Okay, so how can I find that? Okay, well, this is still a four-sided figure, right? Okay, so, you know, my, my sum total of all angles has got to equal 360 degrees. So I just take 360 minus 73 minus 121 minus 121, and that will give me my answer. Okay, so I mean, it's a little bit of a backwards way to do it, but that's, that's fine. So just remember, angle, or angle rules, so that's going to equal 45 degrees. So that's how big that is. There we go. Uh, number eight has got a little bit of a trick as well. They want to know what NP is. They want to know how big is NP. Well, remember, in a kite... Okay, this triangle, this, this diagonal, sorry, this diagonal gets bisected. So if this is 8, this is also 8. Okay, so let's consider what we have here. We have a right triangle where that is 6 and that is 8. So that makes that 6 squared plus 8 squared equals C squared. Um, how do I know that? Well, Pythagorean theorem never goes away. It's always there. 
So a little bit of Pythagorean theorem, and I get that to be 10. So that makes that 10, and, and there's your answer. Okay, there we go. It's an easy. Okay, so now here they want number nine I'm looking at now. Now they want G, F, J. So they're looking for this angle there. Uh, remember that these two angles are going to be the same. So let's, we'll, ju we'll just call that A. Okay, so A plus A plus 128 plus 72 has got equal 360. So 128 plus 72 is going to be 200. Okay, combine the A's. So 2A is going to equal 160. So A is just going to be 80. And there I'm done. There I'm done. Okay, now now we, number ten we, we presents a bit of a challenge. Okay, something we gotta we gotta pay attention to here. Uh, figure out z y. Uh, once again, I'm no, I have to realize that these are perpendicular, which makes that a right triangle. So I want to use a squared plus b squared equals c squared, but I want that to be eight, and I want b to be twenty four. So that's going to be 64 plus 576 equals c squared. So doing some calculator mashing, I get 25.3. So that's how big zy is. And there's my answer. There's my answer. Okay, so now what do you have left? 4.5 assignment okay unit for review and then unit for test where you have to get greater than 70 percent okay so remember 100 percent here 100 percent here or try to then your unit for test has got to be greater than 70 percent okay all right i look forward to answering your questions